and I'm going to call our regular meeting to order. Um, first item is to set a just agenda. Does we have a plenty long agenda, I think, but does anybody have Wait. anything to add or maybe subtract? No. All right. So we're going to roll with the agenda as written. Um, next is select board to approve minutes from last time, which our last regular meeting, which was April 1, and the special meeting on April 27th. Now, April, that can't, is that right? It was April 15th, I think. Yeah, it's got to be 15th. The last select board meeting. Yeah. Hi, Wiz. Um, so. Uh, I can approve the minutes of the April 15th meeting and the special meeting on April 27th as written. Great. Can we have a second? second. Great. Uh, any discussion, discrepancies, changes? All in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 And any opposed abstentions? Wiz is abstaining because she wasn't here, probably. Uh -uh. Yeah. Okay. So the passes, uh, motion passes with four votes with Wiz abstaining. Um, next up is communication from the audience. Does anybody, is anybody here to discuss or to uh, communicate something to the board that's not on our agenda tonight? Moving right along. Um, next up is town manager's report. Uh, Sean Fielder, give us a brief overview of what's happening out of your office. Okay, thanks. Good evening, everybody. Uh, we have moved forward on uh, processing of the roof replacement projects for the public safety building, uh, setting the contracts, excuse me, and uh, historic depot roofs. Uh, so everything is in order there. We don't have the actual start date yet from the contractor, but uh, everything's right in line uh, to uh, keep those projects moving forward. Uh, I did assist with uh, scheduling of a project planning meeting for the Judah Vine Library project. That was with uh, Vermont USDA officials, the library projects architect, and Jody Lou Smith took part in that. I know we're going to talk about this uh, later this evening. Jody is uh, uh, taking part uh, to present, so I don't need to cover anything more on this. She'll talk about it. Other than we'll do a follow-up meeting with that same group I've noted uh, tomorrow. We're doing a follow-up meeting just to do a check back in. Um, we have uh, gone forward on the posting of the public notice for the sale of the 0.12 acre lot in uh, East Hardwick to the O'Briens. Uh, we have a closing date in order for early June, so we're on target with uh, moving that forward. We are, uh, you know, one of the things that many of us are waiting for information on is more details on the American Recovery Plan Act. Uh, I took part in the Vermont League of Cities and Towns weekly update meeting, uh, their legislative update. They talked briefly about a number of issues and they have been providing information on this. What we know at this phase is the money should be a direct allocation to the town as is occurring across the country for towns and municipalities on May 10th. That's uh, directly to our checking account, if you will, or uh, business account. And we're waiting for the details from the US Treasury on how those funds can be spent. Uh, everybody is, including the league, the National League of Cities and Towns, so uh, all of us waiting. We do know uh, in regards to timing uh, and how much time you have to spend these funds, it's through December 31st, 2023. Again, that's as yep. much as we can offer um, on the subject as of right now. As soon as we get more information, which should be coming any time, then we'll have the details of, okay, what's going to be allowed uh, for the town uh, on spending. One detail that was mentioned is the town will be receiving an allocation. And then if there happens to be a, another politically defined entity within the town borders, uh, we effectively as a town would ask through, act as a pass through. So the example for the town of Hardwick that I would call everybody's attention to is if, if East Hardwick Fire District has some eligible spending and something that they are considering, that might be something that comes forward. And then again, the town would be the administrators of that um, as a pass through, if you will. Um, completely different subject, held a recent planning meeting. We've had a, just a couple of brief, brief discussions with the listers 
in this past couple month period, uh, just regarding what their thoughts are on how we handle uh, listing scope services, if you will, uh, for the community moving forward. Um, we're the basic uh, feedback is um, maybe we should consider shifting more to subcontracting of these types of services, maybe in cooperation with our existing uh, assessors uh, service company. So at this point, we're just trying to evaluate some of this information and moving forward, what I will be doing is getting a more detailed report out to the select board this next week. So uh, obviously it's a policy discussion. Um, there's state statute ramifications, there's town charter ramifications. And what we would do moving forward is just keep the uh, conversation going and have, uh, I'd be seeking out a volunteer select board member to uh, be involved with any additional uh, discussions on this topic moving forward. Um, we are collaborating uh, now with the uh, Caspian Lake Beach committee, some representatives there and a volunteer and Center for Ag Economy uh, about Center for Ag Economy donating some of the granite, granite blocks that are now down at the Atkins Field. And uh, the project scope here is that Caspian Lake Beach committee is uh, considering and interested in doing some uh, upgrading the wooden benches that are up at Caspian Beach, changing those to uh, granite, uh, more permanent structures. Uh, obviously, uh, Town of Hardwick owns the uh, facility. So this is something that uh, would be a good improvement moving forward. So we're working on the logistics of this right now to include uh, Tom and I looked at the blocks that they were um, uh, interested. They've got a volunteer who's interested in setting these and working on these. So Atkins Field, CAE donates them up. Town of Hardwick assists with the transport. And then once they're up there, uh, Caspian Lake Beach Committee collaborates with their volunteer to get them put in place. It's a good project. I think it's going to be a real good improvement for that location. Um, I'm keeping it short because we have a lot to cover tonight. So the thing I would close with tonight is, uh, as I've been saying right along, everybody continue to follow the social distancing guidance. We're we're making very good ground as a state and region in regards to incidence numbers for um, uh, COVID. So we want to all of us keep doing our part on this. Uh, if you have an opportunity to get your COVID uh, vaccine, please consider doing so. Uh, just one other thing, it's not written into the report I provided to Casey, but you know we're seeing the guidance significantly adjust uh, in a short amount of time on the Vermont Moving Forward plan. So um, you know some of these restrictions that all of us have been dealing with this past 14 month period, you know overnight they are going away. People shouldn't take that to mean we don't have incidence numbers, you know, around us. So it is important, uh, you know, please continue to practice these social distancing measures if you would. And uh, we're, you know, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I think I might've said this recently. I don't know if I did on this meeting, but uh, on previous select board meeting, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. We're still in the tunnel. You know, hopefully we'll be back to this new normal here in the next six weeks. That's what uh, national health experts and our state experts are indicating. So that's what I have for tonight. Great, thanks, Sean. Does anybody have any questions for Sean? Okay, thank you. Next is uh, the road foreman report. Tom, where are you? There you are. I'm here somewhere. Okay. All set? Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, well, with the rain ain't been helping us out much, neither has a cooler weather for painting. Uh, but we have been managing to get a few days of grading in here, here and there. Uh, besides that, uh, you know, some of the guys have been using some of their comp time or vacation time there when, of course, the days that, that it's been raining now. Uh, so that probably has been out with the street sweeper cleaning. Uh, we've managed uh, to uh, fix just the temporary fix uh, culvert up on stage house that we've got to get back to this summer. Uh, we had to go back down on route uh, or out on Buffalo Street there for the uh, – Sewer pumps out there, uh, we had to pull those out again and get those cleaned up again because they were tripping. Uh, we did have a problem up on Glenside uh, with one of the uh, pump houses up there. Uh, we got that temporary uh, fixed up there for right now. Uh, we do got parts on order up there. Uh, let's see, for line painting and stuff, of course, we got to wait for better weather. Uh, we did order the paint for the crosswalks for downtown. 
they will not be a terracotta color because we cannot find that color in uh, uh, road road paint for uh, water base. Uh, so I did talk to the state about a red. Uh, so the red paint is going to be going down. That has been ordered, but it's kind of almost like a color of a brick is going to be the color. And he did say that was fine. Uh, just to warn you on that paint, we are looking three to four weeks out before we do get it. So we're looking sometime in June, the beginning of June, before we can do the ones down through the middle of the village. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, so I guess that's about it. Thank you, Tom. Does anybody have any yep. questions for Tom? Tom, I had a, um, I had gotten a couple of questions from community members about when, and I don't know if this falls under your department, but when the trash and recycling bins were going to go out in downtown Hardwick. Yeah, I talked to Sean about that. We will be putting them out on Monday. Um, so we'll be putting those out, the bike rack and stuff like that. Um, I, I hesitate to throw this out there, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, does anybody have any interest in re reconsidering the uh, crosswalk color given the delay in getting paint? No? Okay. All right. Just thought I'd ask. Um, thank you, Tom. Okay. Okay. Next up is the police report from Aaron Cochran. And I know I saw Aaron on here somewhere. There you are. I think I figured this out, Eric. Can you hear me okay? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, for uh, the month of April, you have the report there. We had 169 total incidents. Um, I did send you a couple different reports. And so hopefully those are useful. Um, I'm not, not sure if that was the one, if, if either of those are the ones you guys were looking for, but um, I found them to be somewhat useful when looking at uh, days of the week that are busiest uh, for each month, which was the first report that came out. Um, Thursdays and Saturdays being the busiest for, for the month of April. Um, so I sent those out and the top 10 incident types that we dealt with uh, during the month of April. Uh, you have that as well, an incident analysis report. Um, I think that was the one you were referring to, Eric, maybe from the Yeah, line. I think, uh, I think that's right. Hang on. Oh, go ahead. Carry on. <laughs> no, I'm good. I, I just want to, yeah, I think that was the one that, that one, you know, shows your top 10, um, incidents. Um, it's so obviously, yeah. you know, traffic stops being high, um, shows proactive patrols. Uh, suspicious events, you know, that, that can be a, a variety of different things that fall under that category. Um, citizen disputes were fairly high for April. Um, I'm looking forward to COVID being over pretty quick because <laughs> um, we're, we, we've seen several citizen disputes. Um, I think maybe some sunshine and the end of COVID would be beneficial to many of us. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, motor vehicle complaints, you know, chasing those. Uh, we had, you know, a fair amount of those for the month. So, so yeah, uh, the top 10 incidents I find useful. Hopefully you found that, you know, to be somewhat useful as well. Yeah. And thank you, Aaron. I think that incident re incident analysis report is, for me, is very helpful because it just summarizes what you responded to and how many of them. And that it starts with the top 10, I think is. Yeah is helpful. Um, and then I'm going to, I'm going to lead into uh, the, case of the, um, uh, the town budget that I had gone over um, and for the PD um, and, and looked at, you know, areas where um, I can see possible cuts given uh, the situation we were in uh, without the Greensboro uh, revenue. Um, you know, so uh, you can, we can kind of do this interactively a little bit if anybody has questions, you know, on the board. Um, obviously, it doesn't bring us to the uh, revenue factor. Um, uh, Kaylee and I had talked about this a little bit. We we're 
had talked about the uh, uh, marijuana issue. And then um, when we were on the phone, we talked about this just a little, you know, a little bit briefly as well. So um, I think it's, yeah, it's important to realize that one of the concerns, Kaylee, and she can step in here if I'm quoting this wrong, but are not quoting, but um, you know, she she was worried that some some residents felt that because of the loss of revenue that that meant they would be paying more this year, um, which is not the case, um, obviously. And so to make that you know clear, it's not going to cost um, taxpayers more because of the loss of revenue. We're going to have to figure out. Uh, where that comes from. And, and at, you know, at this point, we may have to look at uh, the rainy day fund at the end of the year. We don't know exactly where that, uh, where we're going to fall at the end of the year. Um, obviously, we've come under budget some years, other departments have come under budget some years. And so at the end of the year, I think we're really looking at, um, you know, at this point as the rainy day fund, um, we have uh, two officers down now, obviously, as we've talked about, one uh, position that we haven't filled, uh, one position that's away um, until probably March or April of next year for uh, military leave. And we actually have another officer that's leaving uh, for a six month deployment uh, in July for uh, basic training that joined the, the National Guard. Um, so, it, you know, to keep the coverage that I feel is really important in Hardwick and I know um, many that are on the board now are on the board when uh, we looked at the um, uh, hiring for an additional officer for the COPS grant and um, the PowerPoint that I did, I think was self-explanatory and showed the need um, for the, the police force that we have in Hardwick. So um, obviously I I'm not going to recommend at this point any any you know changes in coverage and and um, what I put forth allows for us to still maintain 24 hour coverage and still maintain the um, uh, the coverage that we currently you know are able to provide. Um, obviously, um, we have to cut uh, in some other areas as I you know was submitted um, as to you, but so that's kind of where we you know where we're at. So you know I'm obviously looking for input from the board as well. Um, I've been through the budget, um, spent a fair amount of time over the last couple of months on the budget, um, just looking to see what areas we are at. Um, but without drastic changes, uh, I think we're looking at um, the rainy day fund or uh, the COVID money. We don't know what's happening there uh, with COVID money that's coming in and what restrictions are gonna be on that as well. But. Um, I, I think at this point, that's where we're at um, there. I certainly, you know, trimmed the budget as much as we have, but we've had negative increases for the last few years. Um, on the PD budget, there hasn't been an increase in the budget. So, um, so yeah, I, anybody can jump in with questions, comments, concerns. Um, so thank you for, for going through that and, um, proposing changes. I appreciate it. Um, I kind of feel like that deserves its own item discussion item on our next agenda. Um, and just because there, there are lots of things to consider. Um, and I think we ought to talk through the ins and outs of retaining the coverage, what the budget numbers look like and all that. Yeah, I just want to add, Aaron, it is really helpful to see that budget. Thank you. And and um, what we had, Aaron and I had touched base about the Cannabis Commission, um, which was a task that from a couple months ago, and we just discussed it. And we we were discussing that next year, that might mean um, there might be, we might need more capacity in the police department because there would potentially be more, uh, <laughs> we just talked about uh, need, needing to have people to support whatever the state decides there. So um, at this point, we've decided that we don't need to set up a commission, um, but we're just gonna keep track of what the state is deciding and develop it from there. But an item in the next agenda sounds like it would give us an opportunity to have a really deep conversation with you, Aaron. Yeah, is that all right with you, Aaron, to have an agenda item next time? 
Yeah, that's fine. Um, that'll give us everybody a chance to review what you've put together, maybe talk to you individually between now and then, and um, have a, an informed discussion next time when hopefully our agenda is a little lighter. <laughs> Sorry, some of that's just pure selfishness. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. I just, you know, I've I've spent time going over the budget to try to find, you know, any areas that obviously that um, could be trimmed, um, not necessarily cut because they're not an area that can be cut completely on that budget. Um, but um, you know, areas that would be trimmed. So I, you know, I've spent a fair amount of time there uh, to try and do. Uh, you know what I could with a budget, but yeah, um, you, know, you know, a lot of it boils down to the you know the major costs are um, personnel, obviously, and um, in July we're going to be down three um, as it is. So, so yeah, um, it really comes down to you know being able to uh, retain the same amount of coverage, obviously. You know, officers are are not willing to work alone, um, and if if it came to that, then that's going to be a huge issue um, retaining officers. Um, you know, other agencies locally are hiring, and um, so that you know obviously plays into a factor where officers at other agencies may not have to uh, work alone, and working alone this day and age is just not safe. Um, you know, we've certainly seen calls uh, where uh, we didn't have enough officers when we had three officers at the time to, um, you know, as of just recently, without going into uh, some of the sensitive natures of the calls, but, um, you know, uh, a week or two ago, we had um, two major calls come in at the same time and, you know, doing our best with when we, when we had a full staff uh, to handle those calls. Uh, sending completely different directions. So, um, so yeah. So we're we're you know doing the best we can, but um, those are some of the factors that we're looking at. Right. Well, it's good to keep in mind. We should discuss more next time. And just when we're looking at that budget, that just to summarize the what the proposal you put forward is kind of the skinniest budget that you can envision that still keeps um, current coverage round the clock coverage yeah exactly okay thank you on, can i just offer on the uh on the retail sales subject just really quick uh, marijuana sales excuse me for retail sales the uh the most recent update on that is that the towns would have to conduct a vote um by uh town let's see i don't know about town meeting 2023 know if you're going to opt in or not so you got some time oh here. you got some time I thought it was 22 it's 23 no, they, now. yeah they pushed it back oh okay all right you got Thank a little you. bit of time is the point right great all right thank you aaron any any more questions for aaron all right thanks um next up is the town clerk's report we have alberta here Hi, Alberta. Hi, guys. Um, so I just wanted to take a really quick minute of the evening and just remind everyone that property taxes are due next Monday. Um, and our office is back open to the public. Um, our regular hours are Monday through Thursday, 8 to noon and 1230 to 4. But next Monday to collect taxes, we'll be there from 730 AM to 6 PM. So you want to come in and pay on Monday, we will be there. Um, postmark of May 10th is, uh, is still accepted as always. And the drop box is available to the right of the front doors of the Memorial Building if you want to just toss it in the drop box. Um, this year, we do have the credit card payment option available, um, as well as the e-check option. Um, if you want to visit our website, hardwickvt.org, for details about those two options, then, then go ahead. Uh, we are um not processing credit cards over the phone at this time it's it's a bigger process than we've been able to master yet so we're not doing it over the phone yet so you either need to come into the office with the card 
or you need to um, do the over the internet. Um, and then the only other thing is the following Monday, May 17th, is when the next water and sewer billing is due. So just wanted to take a chance and get it out there to everyone. That's great. Thank you, Alberta. So taxes are due on Monday. Yeah. All right. Anybody have questions for Alberta while she's here, although she's a little frozen? And maybe Kong. Okay. Thanks to Alberta. That was good. Next up is um, item one, Judevine Library Expansion Update. And we have Jody Lou Smith here to give us an update on the, and Lisa Sama is on is on online as well. So let's tell us about what's happening over the library. We know that the bid, opening the bids was uh, a little bit, um, I don't know, dramatic. Uh, <laughs> and the costs have risen so much. But, all right, tell us, tell us where you're at. All right. Well, um, so um, I think most of you have seen we've put out a pretty broad um, kind of public information campaign to tell everyone what's going on. And so we've been, we opened the bids on April 8th, either the 6th or the 8th. Um, and we, um, they were 50% over what we had raised. So um, it was rather a sticker shock. Um, and we have been hard at work to come up with a new plan. Um, essentially, we are, the new plan is a two phase plan where we are looking to put together um, a means to be able to sign the contract so that we can um, start construction, which has several, um, and several important reasons we want to start construction this year. One is that we have federal funds that um, are supposed to be used in this year. Two is that we have a big donor who showed up recently, um, had been a potential donor for a long time and recently um, let us know that uh, he and his wife want to give $200,000 to the project, but they want us to start the construction this year. They want to be sure they can show the building to their grandchildren, essentially. Um, and the other important reason to start is that there's no guarantee prices are not going to keep going up. And our bids are, we have 60 day bids, um, but they really, the contractor has really advised us strongly that they want to buy uh, lumber, especially soon and store it because the costs are just going to keep going up. So We've been doing value engineering with the, um, the architects and the general contractors um, to strip out whatever can um, at least be delayed so that we can get up a building that is at least partially usable. Um, as Sean mentioned, we met with the USDA and they, um, it's, as they put it, they don't build bridges to nowhere. So it needs to be a usable and habitable building for their funding to come through. That doesn't mean every piece of it has to be habitable, but it has to be largely usable. So the plan is to essentially leave the lower floor, which is community space unfinished and finish the upstairs, which is the reading rooms and the circulation area so that we have a functioning library of expanded space. Um, the other pieces we've tried to uh, value engineer out at least um, until we can raise the funding to put them back in is uh, things like paving, uh, walkways, um, landscaping, um, a lot of the plumbing and things on the lower floor can wait. A lot of the cabinetry um, millwork will wait other than the circulation desk, which we need to open and is a key. But new bookshelves in the old library, finishing the floors in the old library, all those things. We hope to raise the money by the time we finish the building. But if we don't, we still have a habitable building. Um, that's, that's essentially, so that's, Phase one is to get us to 
a contract, a signed contract to start building. Um, phase two is to raise the rest of the money so we have a building that we all feel really great about. And it's a beautiful design, it's a beautiful building, and we're very hopeful that the rest of the money will arrive by the time we finish, or at least within the next year. So dollar-wise, we, um, we've the, the value engineering has gone on and on. We just this week on Tuesday went over the full list of items and essentially to take out everything we possibly can take out and still have a usable building requires that we have, um, I don't have the number in front of me, but I think it's 1.95 million, which is um, just a little over 400,000 from what we had already raised. And of that, we have half of it in hand through this donor. We have a uh, letter going out to donors this week. And we have a number of requests and applications that we have put in and are putting in. We've put in uh, uh, appropriation requests to both Senator Sanders and Senator Leahy. Um, Senator Leahy has a new one coming out this week. Um, we've we applied for the um, AARP funding that Sherry told me about. We applied for um, a number of private potential donors who we had connections to. So we are tentatively hopeful that uh, we will not just raise what we need to put up a frame, but we will raise the rest of the money by the time we need to finish the building. That said, um, we're kind of in a time crunch because the contractors need to get we need to get this contract signed and because its design has changed for this kind of stripped down building it rural development is going to have to review the design again and it's going to be a delay and our uh, bid documents are only, our bids are only good in, for 60 days which gets us to essentially the first week of june so we in order to meet that deadline we kind of need to get this contract sign soon. So that's our update. Um, essentially, we're wondering how the how the how can you the town um, help us get through this kind of like short term bridge loan issue with needing to sign this contract for money that we don't actually need for another six months, but we uh, need the commitment of it. So to summarize where you're at, your gap is currently about 250,000? Uh, roughly, we think it's 200. Oh, about 200. 200, yep. Okay, so you, on, on 1.5 million, or 1.95 million. We had 1.54, so 210. And that number could, shrink as we get donations coming in. We do have other donors who've expressed interest in helping us bridge gap, but we don't know the numbers yet. So essentially you have about a, a month to identify another 200,000 to close that gap and sign the contract. Well, it's kind of less than a month because we need to get the contract to USDA sooner than that. Before you sign it? Before we sign it, yes. And it's right. actually the town who would sign it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, thoughts, anyone on the select board? We still don't know what the COVID funds are going to be allowed to, what we're going to be allowed to use those on. Sean, did you get any update on that? We don't have that guidance because U.S. Treasury is developing it as we speak. That's been the narrative, you know, right ongoing. So I, we don't really know. But preliminary guidance didn't indicate. No, I don't think it can be. Uh, what I basically understand, I am not sure that if you have a cost overrun situation uh, for the, uh, uh, the treasury money that's coming, I'm not sure if that would be a, a pertinent and allowed ex uh, expense. But again, we're waiting for the final guidance. There's other pots of money that are coming. So 
the other thing I think would be important to mention is that, you know, the legislature uh, is trying to button up the session in this next couple week period. We heard Monday, they're trying to button up by May 21. There's other pots of money that could potentially be applicable coming out of the state legislature. But there again, we don't know what that final budget is looking like. Thanks. Wiz? Jody, if it, if it were perfect, do you realize what would the town be able to do? You know, what, what we make a request, you know, ask us something specific, mm -hmm. um, give us something to bounce off. Mm -hmm. um, well, um, what would be perfect for me would be the town to um, approve signing the contract on the belief that the additional 200,000 will be here by January when we need it. Um, we've been very successful at raising money. There's a lot of stimulus money coming. Um, if uh, worse came to worse, uh, the library could you know, maybe possibly it looks like a bridge loan um, that the library takes on. Um, we're, we're, we're hard workers and we raise money. Um, mm -hmm. We just kind of need some faith to get us through this little time crunch. You know, we've had essentially a month to raise a half a million dollars or 450 ish thousand dollars. And we've done half of it, <laughs> but um, we feel very confident we will raise the rest of it by the time we need it. We just need um, essentially like a parent to co-sign a loan for us. <laughs> or make a bridge loan, something, whatever it looks like that the town is comfortable with. Sure seems like a rainy day to me. Mm -hmm. So just to clarify, Judy, so I, I think what you're asking is not, is that we commit to whatever it is, $250,000. So that way you, USDA knows that your project is going to go forward. Yes. However, you're doing fundraising. So you're expect, just so I'm understanding, you're expecting that that $250,000 will be fundraised by the library. So this is like a, yeah. a stop gap, basically. Yeah. And if for whatever reason your funding didn't quite make it to $250,000, then we would come back together and say, mm -hmm. well, we can find X, Y, and Z from whatever town, like we're, we're committing as the town to doing it, but we're not giving the library $250,000 right now. Exactly. Okay. We're committing to um, come back together and make a new plan if for some reason we haven't raised the money, but we, we aren't asking the library, we aren't asking the town to pay the bill. Yeah. Um, so just to phrase it. It's like asking people to vote for a bond for $250,000, even though we know we're only actually going to have to pay back $20,000 of it or something like that. Yeah, it's kind of like that. So I, I put it slightly differently and correct me if I'm wrong, Jody, but I think um, the ask is that the, the town, who is the one who needs to sign the, um, the contract with the um, construction company. The ask is that the town go ahead and sign the contract for roughly 1.95 million, knowing that the money on hand that the library has is only 1.7 something million. And so we're committing the town to pay the whole thing, even though the library doesn't have cash in hand to back that all up. So in a worst case scenario, the town ends up footing the bill for the difference. Exactly. Um, yeah. But of course, we have no intention of that. So um, yeah, that is that is the worst. Yeah. I mean, it is a capital project. It is a rainy day emergency. I mean, there's... And there is, um, I think there is a capital fund for the library and there's also a library endowment which we could strip out if you know which together add up to about sixty thousand dollars okay mm -hmm. 
Um, any other thoughts that people have? I think we the should do it. question is how is it we're, we're making a motion tonight for this. How are we? We, we don't right, have I, to. I assume, <laughs> I assume based on the timing Jody needs that we kind of have to. Well, um, it would be a huge help to us if we did. Um, and I guess my question is, what are we, because I've heard loan, I've also heard rainy day fund. How are we really supposed to be referring to this commitment? Well, it's, um, I mean, we're not actually asking the town to put out the money. So it's more of a commitment to the money. So it, guarantor, sort of. Guarantor, exactly. So I think what what will probably end up happening if I mean either way, like if even if the library had all the money, but the way it would probably roll is the town signs a contract with the um, construction company to build the building. They, we don't incur all those costs up front, so the costs are going to roll in over time. They're going to be bills submitted um, over the course of construction. So even though construction may start you know, in, in, a great, in an ideal world, it may start in July or something, but those bills are going to keep rolling in and there's um, 1.7 something million already that the library has. So I guess the risk is that we get to the end of the project, that last couple hundred thousand bucks and um, the library hasn't raised it all. The town by signing the contract has agreed to pay the contractor for those services. So we can't really back out at that point. So we would have to, um, we would have to, uh, at that point, if the library hadn't raised the rest of the money, we, the select board would have to figure out where that money is coming from. Um, a loan, like any kind of traditional loan, I just wonder how that would get repaid, um, given that the library budget comes from the town. So, I'm not, sure, I'm not really sure how that would work. Well, except that we have built a donor base that we never had before. You know, we have 300 donors who have donated many of them multiple times and we will be raising money on an annual basis um, from here on out. Um, so we believe there is capacity to repay something like that. Um, but we're, we're quite hopeful that you know, as Sean said, there's a whole bunch of other pots of money. There's a specifically capital project fund that the U.S. Treasury is supposed to release guidance on at some point. And so um, we're hopeful that there's, this is um, a short term, short term gap. Because in truth, we really want to raise the rest of the uh, another half a million dollars to finish the building. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know how to word the motion, but I would like to have a motion to go to have the town go ahead and sign the contract, understanding that there's a little bit of risk in it, but we have faith in the library's ability to raise the money to actually pay the contract and eventually finish the building. So basically, it would be a promissory note that's only payable on the contingent the libraries in a unable to come up with the funding. Right. Yeah. 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 Kind of. Except. The, yeah. Yeah. I think in essence, that's that's what it is. So I'll, I'm happy to second that motion. So I think. Um, I'm not. Sorry. Well, I know I know what I'm trying to say. I'm not sure that the words I used are doing, but basically, um, I think the town can trust the library to raise the money as it as they need it as it comes in. But the contract needs to be signed, and I would encourage the town to go ahead, or I would would move that the, the town go ahead and sign the contract understanding that the library does not have the money in hand, but demonstrating a full faith that the library will in fact raise the money. Um, 
I'm wondering if uh, the motion needs to be a little more specific and be something along the lines of like, uh, I move to uh, instruct the town manager to sign a contract with um, bread loaf construction out of Middlebury, Vermont for whatever the amount, exact amount is, that kind of thing. Probably you're right. Jody, John Adams, when he went into meetings, usually had a motion in his pocket that he wanted the body <laughs> to. You don't happen to have that motion in your pocket, do you? Well, I could come up with the number that I think is pretty darn close. Um, that I could do. But I don't think you have to come up with the number as much as you have to. The, yeah, it just like yeah, Eric said, that, it just think, instruct the town manager to sign the contract with the with the contractor, which is bread loaf, right? Yeah, uh, I think that says it. I mean, you know, doesn't it? As long as it doesn't if, exceed two million. As long as it doesn't uh, exceed two million. Yep, not uh, to exceed two million. Just a thought, and not to derail the discussion, but I think what uh, what our experience with USDA is is uh, we would have to, so they have confidence in the project. We just have to be careful and make sure we clearly demonstrate that it the project's whole in regards to the total amount of funding that is needed. So, well, that's, that, that's the main it. thing that that the town is a guarantor, basically. What I think that we all understand that. The town's on the hook for it if the library doesn't come up with it. Absolutely. Would it be John, helpful? Specifically, do they need us to stay? Um, if the library didn't pay, where would the town take the money from to step in? Is that what they're looking for? We don't know. I doubt. Exactly. I doubt the USDA cares about the nitty gritty of our internal budget. Yeah, they don't care about that. But maybe they do. I doubt it. I don't think they do. And they uh, what they what they are partners though with that meeting we had last week just so everybody hears this they uh, you know they understand what it is we are dealing with and are you know trying to support us as best they can so I think that's important we note that here. I mean they've actually wanted this project for a long time. I mean not just since this part. I I've been talking to them since 2008 and they really want this because it's one of their priorities to build libraries in rural communities because it helps rural communities stay intact. And I've had conversations with Ben Doyle, who used to be the head of our region, and also Eric Lowe, and they've both been having conversations on our behalf with other people. They're looking for money. You know, they're looking, they're, they, they understand, they, they're very supportive and understand exactly where we're at, and they want to see this thing happen. Um, so realistically, the motion could be as simple as to instruct the town manager to sign a contract with Breadloaf Construction for the completion of the Judevine Library project and an amount not to exceed $2.1 million. That would allow cost overruns. Prices are, as you said, are going to change. I think the contract, though, I don't think we need to allow for any excess. Right. I mean, I think we're just looking to sign the contract. Yeah. And then somebody's going to have to manage any change orders such that it doesn't go over. Well, we won't be adding anything back into it, right, unless we have the money in hand. So we need to raise up to the amount of the contract and then anything we can raise over that we can add back in. And you guys have Steve Pickin working for you to help. Yep. Yes, yeah. he's been great. Yep. Yeah, he's been great. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of things that just you know can be kept out if they we can't if the money's not there and we do them later. You know. So do we not so have a motion on the floor, or am I? We wrong? do. I believe we have. I mean, it, this got a little messy, but Wiz made a motion to go ahead essentially and then we and then Sherry seconded it so I'm not sure that we have the so Wiz's motion reads 
Casey, what do, what do you have, Casey, on that? Um, or do you need that, it from us? Um, I show that um, to have the town manager sign the construction contract with Red Loaf Construction for the Judavine Library not to exceed $2 million. How's that sound, everybody? Does that sound perfect. like what Wiz said? It's perfect. <laughs> All right. More discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? I think that was everyone on the ayes. All right. So go ahead. We're trusting in you guys. Thank you. <laughs> we'll you raise the money. It. We will. We'll raise the money. We can do it. Thank Farmer Steel for the tire. <laughs> All right. Thanks, All right. you guys, so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, okay, here we go. Next is item two is the, um, Casey's got the um, quarterly budget review for us. I did a sheet that's screen item number share. three. Did see that? That's on. Yeah, yeah, we've uh, point of order. We've skipped an agenda item. Oh, oh. Did I go, oh, did I? I'm sorry. Yeah, thanks, Michael, for catching that. Sorry, I must be working off an old. Yeah, mine says that, but it, the quarterly budget report. Maybe I'm working. I've got a paper. We're going to discuss in person meetings. You're you're working off we the are. draft, and that's the draft. Oh, I'm sorry. Draft with that. Um, so. The final version is the quarterly budget update. I it's apologize. in the drive. Yeah, all right, let's roll with that. Okay, budget so we're update. Gonna, we're gonna do that then? Okay, let me go back to share my screen then. Thank you. Okay. All right, so first, um, revenues. Um, so in the general fund, most of the revenues are on track. Water and sewer revenues, I did not provide, but they are on track at 53 and 55% respectively. We did just bill for the third quarter, so we should be around 50%. So, um, okay there. Delinquency for those accounts is hovering around 57,000 right now. Um, we did hear some... Uh, feedback that the um, arrearage program on the utility accounts might have some more money. We haven't got confirmation, some talk of that. So if that's the case, we're hoping that um, some customers will be able to apply and get some relief on those accounts. Um, same as before, um, the way our system works is the actual figure until we pay the school is basically the bill portion. Um, last check with Alberta, we had about 2.7 million left to collect. Um, we expect out of the total build about close to 2.7 would be the portion that the town keeps and then we have to pay the schools. Um, highway revenues are showing over 100% because we did receive a one time I don't know if it's sort of COVID related, like a little boost to the, like an extra quarterly payment of around 38,000. So um, we'll get, we'll still have another quarterly payment coming. So we have um, extra revenue we did not expect in that category. Um, the, the other grant revenue of course shows a thousand percent, which it's a high percentage, but dollar wise, it's because we had some COVID expenses that we were able to get reimbursed for through a grant and we only anticipated the green update grant. So that's where that comes from. And then other revenues are very close to where we expected at 77%. Questions on the revenue? Um, oh, no, carry on. Okay. So we'll move on to expenses. So being that this was as of March 31st, 75% uh, through the year, that's where we would expect our expenses to be. Um, we're, we were actually at about 67%. So we're slightly under budget at that time. Um, 
you know, departments are obviously being cautious with spending. We had a milder winter, um, so we had savings in salt and overtime in the highway department. Um, we have um, like a lot of our insurance, all of our insurances, the LCT insurances are already paid for the remainder of the year. Um, police and highway are under budget and obviously police is because we've had people leave, we're not able to replace them knowing um, this, the um, revenue loss in the coming year. Um, we had highway was at 82% of their salt budget and we spent a little bit more on invoices since then, but I think we're still probably only around maybe 90% of in, in the end, somewhere around there. So this breaks it down by category, overall the 67.4%. Oh, that's nice. So appropriations, you know, we're just, we um, actually since then I've paid out the remainder of them. So that's actually almost 100% now. Um, but at that time we hadn't received all the requests and I've paid out rescue squad since then as well. Um, yeah, so I think that's, that's it unless you have questions. Does that, my only question is just the summary at the bottom that 67% that mm -hmm. must include um, rescue squad and appropriations not showing as paid out on this one, right? Correct, yes. Right. Okay, not all right. But they have since been paid out and I ran it the other day and I think we're maybe 77 or 78, somewhere around there, which we're one more month beyond the 75. So we're, you know, we really, we're really on track to where we should be. Great. That's good news. Thank you. Um, okay. Other questions for Casey? Thank you, Casey. Um, I'm going to move us to item three, which is to consider a letter of support for the Crossbury Community Care Center grant application. We have uh, Rennie Bledsoe's here. Hi, Rennie. Um, Hi. And uh, I know I talked to Kathleen um, Emmons, but you're here to talk to us about this letter and, yeah, or just I tell us briefly, know, no, pardon? just tell us briefly the, what the care center is looking to do. I will. So I don't know a lot of you. I am a, a Hardwick resident. I live on Montgomery Road right next to Kathy. Kathy's um, on the board of the care center, but her husband's ill, she couldn't be here. So. I've been helping them with the grant writing. So the Crespo Care Center is um, trying to uh, do a major infrastructure upgrade. They want to replace insulation. You know, that's mostly for energy efficiency and cost savings. Um, but their main focus is the ventilation system. So the air handling system for the building, you know, this is a something they kind of knew they needed to do. The building was built in 94, but with COVID, I mean, they had a, a significant number of cases, two deaths of, out of 24 residents. And they really, you know, like many facilities feel that they um, are much more at risk health-wise than they thought they were before the pandemic. So, um, so uh, we're writing a grant for the Northern Borders Regional Commission, um, 350,000. Uh, the full cost of the project is 450, but the center is gonna use 100,000 of a, res a facility facilities reserve they have. Um, Steve Pitkin, who's on the board um, of the center is also helping significantly with this. Um, and so we are hoping to get letters from all of the towns that support the center. Um, I, think, I think that's five towns and I think um, we've gotten, I think three of them and a promise for one more. So, so um, I, it, I sent a letter, a draft of a letter to Casey. I think it was in your folder. And there yep. was also just a little um, information sheet uh, uh, in your in your um, folder as well that just a, a little bit about the center um, as I said I'm not on the board I really came on just to help them with the grant writing but I you know I I, I think I can answer questions if you have other questions 
um, I think it's a great thing for us to support. I think that um, the Cross Prairie Community Care Center provides a valuable service for our region. Um, and Hardwick is certainly um, a town that has a lot of you know residents who, who end up at the care center near the end. Um, so I think it's great. Does somebody wanna- So the, the 100,000, is that the match or do you not have to have a match? That's the match. The match okay. has to be 20% um, and 100 on uh, 350 is a little over the 20%. Right. But it's money that the center has in its facilities budget sort of as it was a, um, a reserve they had in their facilities budget and then some money from their vacancy budget. They're actually hoping to try to do a bit more fundraising. There are other things they want to do related to this. They want to redo the kitchen. And part of that is concern about that ventilation system and safety, but it's also just replacing some equipment. Mm -hmm. So, um, but when we sent our letters of interest into Northern Borders, they, um, they, they said the kitchen they didn't consider um, fell within their purview, but although the, the rest of it does. So we're, pro we're probably a pretty long shot grant. There's a lot of people going for this money, but Dave Snedeker has been really helpful from oh. MBDA and has encouraged us to go forward even though we're a long shot. So that's what we're doing. I move that we direct the town manager to sign the letter of support for the Four Cs project. The letter as that. written, I just want to point out as it says uh, signed by the select, select board. board. Right. Yeah. Uh, is that is that important, Rennie, do you think? If it's the town manager or the select board? Yeah. Uh, not really, I don't think so. I mean, I think if you if the town manager signs it, um, you could add a phrase that said with the approval of the select board. Or on or behalf of the select yeah. board. Pardon? We don't all have to troop into the office. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, I just sent you wording, which of course you can change, but I think if you, you put, you know, the town manager is signing with the approval of the select board at the March 6th meeting or something so that they know it's um, supported by the board. So I'll second that motion as well. I Great. Think we lost Wiz for a second there. She's- Yeah, she's, she's very not. still, suspiciously still. <laughs> um, all right, so all in favor of uh, having the town manager sign the letter of support on behalf of the town, please say aye. 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 Hi. 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 I'm sure Wiz would be saying I if she was with us, but she's frozen. So that's back any second there. Coming back any second. Coming soon. <laughs> so Zoom call near you. Um, Rainy, Rainy, should that letter go back to you, given the situation? Yeah, you I mentioned? mean you can scan it and email it to me. I can um shoot you my email or I could drop in and pick it up either way. It's fine. due Monday, so I think you need to email me. It's due on Friday. Um, I'm hoping to, the, it's due on the 14th. Oh, we. I saw the 10th in the notice I was looking at here that was Oh, provided. I was hoping to get everything by then just to compile, but. Okay, so I'll get it to you. Uh, I'll get it to you first part of next week. Okay, and we'll communicate on just exchanging that. I'll get it to you in a PDF format, okay? Okay, that's great. Yep. All right, Wiz, well, did, thank you very much. Wiz, did you, thanks, Granny. Wiz, did you vote aye on that, to, on your motion? Okay, good. So that's a unanimous. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks, Granny. Appreciate my it. My sister kicked me off. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, but I'm back. Okay, good. So next up is item four to discuss the town manager search. Um, uh, so this is, I thought I saw Danny's smiling face earlier. He's back. Mm -hmm. Um, so I know, I know we had, uh, so it, I think the thing we'd like to do is talk about, um, putting together a search committee, correct? And Kaylee, you've been working on this. Yeah, Eric, I just want to say we are, we're actually ahead of schedule. So there are a few other individuals who, nice work, um, who are also interested in potentially serving on a committee who are probably going to be joining us closer to 720. 
Um, but there are quite a few people in the community who reached out to me and then others who um, reached out to other select board members. And so um, we talked about this in our special meeting, but basically we're in the beginning stages of putting together a hiring committee for the next town manager. Um, and we just wanted to have a conversation about, I think more logistics than anything, correct me if I'm wrong there, Eric, like what that might look like. Me personally, this is my first experience with this, so I don't think I can speak to it. Um, but we just want to have a discussion and maybe hear from um, hear from the folks in the community who are interested about what their availability and interest, and maybe a little bit about them, if we have time for that. Sure. So, yeah, that's great. So uh, just in the past, um, town manager searches have we've pulled in community members, um, even though the um, the authority to hire the manager is vested with a select board. We try to gather in some community members to help us with the search, get more um, a broader view and have just have more people to provide input as we um, as we uh, consider candidates. So uh, so it'd be great if um, I, I mean, gosh, I feel like we probably all know you guys, but um, <laughs> Good. Uh, you just want to introduce yourselves. I'll call out. So I'll start with Danny Hale. Say your name, Danny Hale. My name's Danny Hale. <laughs> and I'll start with you are a giving bunch. <laughs> I was waiting for you to chime in. You? Oh, well, I didn't think it was appropriate. But anyway, Danny Hale. And you're 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 interested in helping us I, find a new I manager. Am, I'm interested. Yes. Good. Awesome. What Lynn? do you bring to the oh. search committee, Danny? What are your strengths? Uh, different views than some other people. <laughs> I've been farmers. I've been a selectman. I've been involved in the past two um, town manager searches. Valued pragmatism. That's what I'd call it. Is that what you call it? Yeah. Okay. And That's, a lot yeah. of good knowledge. Right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Danny. Um, Lynn, could you introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Lynn Gedanken. Um, I know a lot of you, I think. Um, I'm also interested in, in assisting in the, in the search. Um, I've been learning a lot about the town um, through the electric department. And um, like to be more involved. Great. Thanks. Um, Amy. Um, yes, hi, I'm, I'm Amy Rosenthal, and I am the chair of the OSSU board and on the Hazen board. And I'm also um, one of the coordinators of the community allies. And um, I was involved in both the superintendent and the Hazen principal search um, and recognize the importance of sort of different, not only different stakeholders being involved, but a certain vision about what it was that we were looking for in terms of how we envisioned um, the school system um, to go forward. I think we were incredibly successful um, in that effort. And so I'm very interested um, in being involved in the um, town manager search, because I think particularly from the perspective of the community allies, really being able to identify who's coming in, the strengths, how they align with the vision for the town and for the community is really important. Great. Thank you. Um, the other thing that Kaylee brought up is time commitment. And I honestly don't remember. So maybe Sherry, Danny, Wiz, somebody remembers. I mean, I think we had a, a lot of, it seemed like a lot of evening meetings um, there was there was a fair amount. I think we went through last time we went through thirty or forty applications, maybe that had been like met minimum criteria. And then I think we interviewed maybe would we interview half a dozen people, maybe eight. I don't remember. Eight. It was eight, I think. Yeah, and then narrowed it down to two. Have you decided that have we talked about what the search is going to be? For a phone interviews, and we bought three to ten. Okay, I was a little broken, but I think we got it. Um, sorry, Danny. So, it, 
did you say did we identify you identify what the process is going to be yes i mean last time i think we did national search right which i know you and i talked about was probably yeah. a, i hate to say a waste of time but it I don't know. I don't. It was a learning. Experience. It was yeah. a learning experience, but I think what we learned, and maybe share. I mean, we could talk about this later too. But I think I, Danny, and I talked about what we thought we learned from that was that ultimately we were looking for somebody who had or um, some real, real knowledge of New England towns and how they function. You know, within yeah. within the state and all that. We could maybe um, have more of like a regional search versus a national. Right. Right. I mean, unless you find someone that has a tie to Vermont, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not really the job that you're going to pack your family up and, especially if you're a younger person, and move all the way across the country to be the town manager in Hardwick. <laughs> or, or if you're looking to do that, you're already looking for postings yeah. in Vermont. Right. right. So right. they, they would find it because they're That's looking. Right. Yeah. It seems that seems like something that once we have the committee formed, we could make that get into. Yeah. Can I ask a question? This is Casey. Um, when you envision this committee, um, how many people are going to be on it? Just out of curiosity, like, are you thinking a few family, a uh, few community members, and a few of the select board, or the whole select? Like, I guess what so are you so envisioning? I think it'll be the whole select board because the select board is the is tasked with hiring the town manager. So I think that that's critical. Um, and I think uh, last time we had four or five community members. Four, I know. Stop. Yeah. There's Sorry. smoke downstairs. The alarm may sound. Sorry, hang it's on. Going to be loud. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's cooking, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's probably it's probably worth mentioning where we are with the League of Cities and Towns too. Okay, so um, I don't really have an update there. Um, I haven't talked. I, gosh, I did email um, recently, but I haven't had a conversation. I will reach out again and find out where we're at there. Um, I know that. The, so the other part of this is we are hiring an interim town manager, John Jewett, to start um, as Sean leaves. And John is interested in, in assisting us in any way that we, that we would find helpful. And one of the things he mentioned from watching from the town office point of view last time the search was that he thought that the town office could probably support a fair amount of the administrative work that VLCT did for us before. And um, I don't know. We we can discuss that later too. I think, but um, I think just uh, I didn't get a cost from Abby this time, and I didn't get a commitment that they could even do it. But I do think it's also worth noting that 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 would mean with John, that's five of us who have been through this process at least once. Myself, I have done it twice now. This will be number three. Danny, you were on the, you were a, commu a community member on that first one. So it's number three for you too. Um, yeah, so we should talk about that. But I think um, there, we have some options there maybe to really consider. Yeah. The so I could, for, could provide the forms, you know, the, what, what should the paperwork look like? And, and we could probably take it from there. And we have a lot of that from last time. Right. Yeah. Right. Fun to quickly mention, Eric, there are, if we do wrap this conversation up before others join us, I know that Lucian Avery is interested as well. Um, Ross Conley also express, expressed interest and um, Jen McLean, they were given information for the meeting. They might join later. Um, yeah. But so that I believe is six people that I'm aware of who've expressed. It okay, first. that would be plenty in my view. I think we get to a certain point and, and conversations become a little unwieldy, but. And also um, just figuring out meeting times for that many people is a little tricky. Yeah, I think of. last time we had a couple of people that we didn't, we didn't, I didn't, don't I remember someone that could only show up a little bit 
Uh, yes. Yeah, in the beginning. I mean, I can go either way. I, you know, I can, you're going to get my input no matter what. In the beginning, I think. I don't have to be in the committee. The way we. Sort I think you of, do. I feel like the flow was that we had a uh, quite quite a good number of people in the very beginning and as we pared it down then we also uh, lessened the number of people that were sitting in the interviews right. for instance we didn't right. necessarily have all the community members that were sitting through the interviews no i don't think any committee members working. sat yeah. in the actual interviews i think right. that i think that we left the committee members left at the phone stage right uh, the sit down, we never did to sit. I, I did, I was slept with them, but you know what I'm saying. Only with the select board with those, yeah. Right, and we'll be doing this by phone, I'm assuming, or by computer, right? Correct? Well, I, until July, yeah, probably. So, and people, yeah. So, I think it would be great to um, form the committee, uh, get the committee together, um, and discuss like our vision for, you know, what we're looking for, the actual job posting, job description, how we think we're gonna handle the search. Are we gonna to try to do, do it, handle it mostly in house? Are we gonna to try to contact with VLCT or the New Hampshire organization that they would want us to do if they can't do it? Um, and, then, um, and then move forward. Yep. It seems like, didn't we have weekly meetings isn't seems like we had a, a lot of meetings. That's all yeah, I can. Seems like we met once a week for the, uh, for the. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It was a lot. Yeah. It's important, people. It's important. It is. Yes, we're meeting twice a week. At yeah. The end, yeah. I just also yeah. Yeah. Um, we had we had a goal we had a goal of hi of hiring the next town manager at some point between September and. October, November, right? That's that was kind of our what we were shooting for. Mm -hmm. I think sep towards the September end of that spectrum mm -hmm. is what's in my mind. Yeah, that's going to be here like whack. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, I have time, so I'll, I can. Can can we formally? nominate this committee next time or do we do you feel like we need to do it now we can do it now people if somebody wants to do it let's do it now Kaylee, what do you think well given that you know of people who wanted to be here but aren't here we'll include yeah, them <laughs> why not oh. yeah let what happens happen. when you don't show up early yeah, <laughs> I would like to nominate uh, for the town manager search 2021, uh, Danny Hale, Amy Rosenthal, Lynn Gattakin, Lucian Avery, Jen McLean, and Ross Conley, if they are interested. Maybe we can send them an email after this with uh, <laughs> some more of the commitments and they can let us know if they're still interested. Any other nominations? Uh, it's, automa it's automatically assumed the board members are on, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Should we do a doodle poll thing? I'm no good at them. Just saying, I'm no good. But for Kaylee what, for, for nominating? No, for the meeting thing. For like a meeting. Space. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> so all, all in favor of approving the slate uh, to nominate to the search committee that Kaylee just rattled off, please say aye. 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 That's mm. any opposed. Okay, motion carries. So welcome aboard <laughs> to those who are here. So it'd be great to set like a standing meeting night, like a time, and then. Um, so that's what Sherry's was getting at. Yeah, I, I'm with yeah. Sherry. And then we can schedule it. And if you can't make them all, we're going to be meeting your, enough time so that you can. Yeah, what we'll do, Danny, is I'll, I'll send out an email with some options and then we'll just figure it out. Yep, yep, that's fine. Sounds great. Thank you, guys. Oh, one other Thank thing you. while we're still, 
Thank you. Um, while we're still on this item, this is not related to the committee, it's related to the interim town manager. I sent around a, a contract um, that I, has been back and forth with between me and John for the interim town manager to the select board. Did everybody get a chance to review that? I know some of you have. Yes. Some people That's... noted their names were misspelled. No, I just noted that you might want to put Elizabeth instead of Wiz on there. Well, and I, Kaylee's name was misspelled. And oh no, oh, and you yeah. didn't capitalize select board, and you, you can didn't, that one separate, didn't capitalize uh, chairman. Don't you think that should be anyway? Uh, what if uh, we just have you sign that? Should I should I make a motion that we have you sign that contract with John on our behalf? Yes. Are you making a motion? second? <laughs> so you move that. Sherry's making a motion. motion. Move it. I think Kaylee got the second on that. Oh, Liz okay. Was I was on mute. I'm happy to second it. The only process question I have, Eric, is that we didn't, are, are we supposed to warn that for the meeting? Because it was not on the agenda or in the board folder. I just, if we don't need to, that's totally okay. I just want to make sure we're doing it correctly. I, yeah. So I had, Figured it was okay underneath the um, town manager search to, but I I feel okay with oh, it I'm, just because. Cool with it. I just yeah. want to make sure we're. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're doing the I business. Agree. Yeah, I don't think we need to warn it separately. Okay, so sorry, we had a motion from Sherry, a second. Maybe from Kaylee or maybe from, but I, Kay, I mistook Kaylee raising her hand for a second, but Wiz was sec, so, so Wiz gets a second on that. No, give it to Kaylee. She got there give, first. Kaylee. Kaylee gets a second. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, that's everyone. So motion carries and I will sign that contract on behalf of the select board with John. And I'll, Sean, if it works out with you, what I'd like to do is just have you and John be in touch with each other about spending a little time together in the handoff period. Absolutely. And let, just let you guys work that out. I don't. Yeah, that's fine. We can coordinate that direct. And from talking to each of you separately, it sounds like you both are very flexible. And sure. so it's easier for me if you guys just figure that out. Yeah, and it's important um, from my perspective that it is, uh, you know, John's properly informed. Obviously, he's coming back from, uh, you know, he's been here before, but I want to make sure there is a good transition. So that's important from my perspective. I want to do our due diligence here. Great. Um, uh, thank you, everybody. So next up is item five. Select board to discuss illegal burning in town and discuss the draft of a possible ordinance. Sherry put together an ordinance based on um, uh, information she found, I believe, from other towns. There was some discussion. There was some discussion about maybe setting a standing meeting for the the uh, search committee. Kaylee's on that. Did we decide not to do that? She's going to send Kaylee's out a doodle. That. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, so, uh, Sherry put together a ordinance based on, I think, model ordinance and what other towns have done um, about illegal burning. Um, and the suggestion from the Vermont Judicial Bureau that if a town is um, interested in, um, they encourage towns to uh, develop an ordinance so that people can designate so that the town can designate an enforcement officer otherwise the enforcement officers uh, uh, can be up to six different individuals in town um, and we seem to have a, a problem people don't know who to call so Thank you for putting in all the work. I think the ordinance looks good. Um, I have to say that I find it very bizarre that we need to pass an ordinance against illegal burning, which is already illegal per statute. And already per statute, the Harvick police can respond. And it seems like they would be the default people to call. But anyway, that's just my commentary. <laughs> C 
Come on, people. Yes, Am I the only one who's going to say something? Call. But very often when something's happening, um, they get called and they may or may not actually go. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't make their their incident report. It doesn't, you know, when I talked with uh, Aaron about it and when he had uh, Officer Leho do all of that research, Officer Leho even said in his email that it is, um, uh, uh, I can't remember what word he used, but it's, um, it's not clear. It's not clear what they're supposed to do. Um, you know, it's different. The ordinance also um, does a does a service in explaining to people what burning is legal and what they should do if they're going to burn legally. Um, we have a lot of people who may or may not actually get a permit when they're going to burn actual not illegal materials. So it just it just helps people understand what they're supposed to be doing and how they do it. Um, Can we put in something in there about people shouldn't be litter littering either? Yeah, sure. Okay. Why don't you Thanks. add that? I'd love to. <sighs> Maybe they shouldn't um, be speeding. This really, really, this ordinance really came about because there, it sounded like from the last meeting, there was a real communication there was com not necessarily a communication breakdown, but the, all the different parties didn't know who to turn to to make a decision or to enforce the law, to your point, Eric, which says that you aren't supposed to be doing this anyway. Um, so it seems like either we pass an ordinance that makes it really clear and puts it in writing, or we say, we are going to make sure that X person enforces this law but I don't know, I guess my question is if we do that as a select board, is that gonna change in a couple of years when we have a different select board or when we've got different people? Like is an ordinance in some ways a way to just say, yes, we are following, <laughs> it seems redundant, um, but maybe what we need is some redundancy to make it really clear. I think that's exactly what Sherry's saying is I just find it very frustrating that we're in this position, but I'm okay to, I don't want to talk about it anymore. So I <laughs> want to make a motion to pass it as written. Um, well, usually with an ordinance and it's something to do with you, Sherry, but don't we usually have our attorney look at them first before we pass something? Bill hasn't looked at this. So I thought- we Yeah, could, we can. I, I mean, like the parklet ordinance he looked at, it's just typical practice that we have sure. to look at it. Yeah, we could have him look at it and then have him review also... it. And then if he's good with it, we can um, approve it at the next meeting if you want to. Yeah, and there's there's also the whole like delay thing. The whole right? process of, of creating a new ordinance. So it has all of those periods of time where people can appeal and right. discuss and 14 days following the adoption, you know, post a petition, yada, yada. So. It would be nice to get it started. Okay. All right. So, excuse me, would that time frame for appealing such ordinance before being passed or after being passed also include us needing to warn it? Yeah, I don't remember the whole thing. Um, I think that the way it goes, paper, paper of record is what we do on this and town website, porch forum just making sure folks are advised, uh, you know, there's a period where it doesn't become official overnight on the motion. There's a legal period where folks can petition and if they're not comfortable offer commentary. But I believe that, so correct me if I'm wrong on Sean, but I believe that we start with um, passing it as a select board and then that triggers the, the um, posting it to the newspaper and the, the period, the waiting periods and everything, right? Sorry, yes, that's correct. I misunderstood the question. No, no, you're no, you're good. Um, so, uh, but to Casey's point, um, it's fine to have Bill review it. Um, then we can set it in motion next time, but and then another, in the yeah, and warn it at for the next meeting once yep. he's taken yep. a look at it. 
make sure that I got all the references correct and stuff. So Sean, can you send that over to Bill? Yeah. Okay, that's great. And um, you know, in the meantime, uh, illegal burning is still illegal and call HPD if you witness it. Yeah, and I don't think it's a bad idea to, well, yeah, I'm not even gonna say that, it's fine. Yeah. Have Bill look at it. Yeah, it's fine. All right, I'm gonna move us on, thank you. Next is, um, where are we? Item six, select board to review the downtime designation draft resolution. So Sherry, do you want, this is you again, do you wanna lead that discussion? Um, well, we've talked about downtown designation quite a few times in, in past meetings. Um, and um, I uh, went ahead and drafted a resolution potentially for the select board to, I don't know, what do you say, adopt or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. I feel strongly that it's, it's a pivotal pivotal place in time to go ahead and and do this thing. Um, I have done a lot of work to make sure that I have uh, support in creating a commission that will be effective and um, completing the application. Um, we have the support from MVDA is very interested in seeing us do this. We heard from Gary Holloway. He said that he thought that Hardwick was very well positioned to be a down, designated downtown. We have, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what else I need to say about it aside from, I think it's time. Okay. Um, Thank you. So. Anyone else? I absolutely agree. I read it over pretty thoroughly. I believe that it's time for Hardwick to move on this. I'd like to make the motion that we approve the downtown designation resolution for the town of Hardwick. Sherry, is there Second. anything that we need to say specifically in a motion? Well, it's the resolution, so the we resolve oh, read them yeah the town resolves yeah the select board resolves too but I, yeah do we need to read the whole thing uh so yeah so um i make the motion that we adopt the town of hardwick downtown designation resolution stating whereas the town of hardwick has had a village center designation since February of 2003 with the most recent renewal in March of 2016. And whereas the Hardwick Planning Commission has established a strong commitment to the pursuit of downtown designation by including the goal slash priority in the Hardwick Town Plan. And whereas the 2016 Hardwick community visit process identified enhancing Hardwick's downtown and building a business and economic development network as a priority Downtown designation creates this network to further support civic, cultural, and economic activities alongside downtown revitalization. And now therefore, be it resolved that the Hardwick Select Board hereby approves the intention to submit an application to the Vermont Downtown Program and further resolves to establish a downtown commission and appoint a minimum of five with up to seven individuals who will serve to complete the initial application and further serve in two-year appointments as the governing body that will partner with all local and regional allies needed to realize the full potential of downtown Hardwick. Be it hereby resolved this sixth day of May, 2021. I second the motion. No, I think I heard Wiz second it way back when, but <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> Give it to Wiz. Anyway, resolved and seconded. Um, any more discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. That's everyone. Thank you, Sherry. Yeah, let's see. Let's uh, hope it goes differently this time. Just couldn't help it, could you? No. <laughs> third time's the charm? I don't know. This is not the third time. <laughs> I'm poking I'm your butt. I'm going to slap you sorry. when I see you next. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I couldn't help it. All right. Um, Oh, sorry. Now I'm lost. 
I got yeah, lost. You should be lost. <laughs> You're supposed right. to talk about Springfest and fireworks now. Thank you. Thank you. That's where we are. Springfest and fireworks. So Springfest is canceled. Um, fireworks don't necessarily need to be canceled if the school is willing. I think that's the gist. Correct. They have their school board meeting on the 10th. We have to get permission to use the Hazen grounds. Um, if they say yes, then I are think we... you guys already said we would move forward with the Memorial Day. Um, I did indicate in my request to them that if they say no for Memorial Day, would they consider graduation as an alternative? So we need to wait to hear back from them after they meet on the 10th. Are we still in a drought? Yes. Are we? Absolutely. I believe we are. I, would, I think that would be something to consider, just saying. Absolutely. I think that it would need consent of the fire warden. I believe that. It always yeah, does, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. we should do it. <laughs> because we don't have the parade, and it's terrible. And we push it off last year. And with so far, the guidance is telling us to Sean's point that there's no reason why we can't all be outside masked and far apart. Well, and if they, if the school board agrees from, if they launch at the school, you don't actually have to go to the school to see them. You can see them from all over downtown. We could just go to your house. You can come to my house. Although the trees have grown and you can't see it very well anymore. Um, all right, so uh, carry on with that, Casey, I guess, sounds like. We could do it over Hardwick Lake if they don't. Yeah, I mean, we're hoping obviously that they say yes, but we gotta wait to hear back from them. Yeah, Sherry's right. We could do it over Hardwick Lake or. Yeah. If, they, if they don't, that's, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> okay. It'd be great to have it at Hazen. Mm -hmm. Hazen for the, Memorial Day, if that doesn't work for graduation, sounds cool. Probably prom would be cool. Whatever. All right, so you're on that, Casey. Yes, I'll let you know. Great. Explode some stuff somewhere this year so we can watch it. <laughs> yeah. All does right. that, mean, does that work for the burn ordinance? No, no, exploding, not burning. Oh, okay, good. Fireworks. Fireworks yeah. are not trash. No. Boy, there's a lot of roadside trash. Um, next is item eight, select board to discuss portable toilets in the village. Um, I don't have anything on this. What's, help me somebody. We've talked periodically about the um, during COVID that it was difficult because a lot of the toilets that people frequent that were open to the public uh, were in restaurants that weren't open to the public. I think that situation is changing or has begun to change. Um, yeah, it's also true that people depend on uh, businesses on Main Street to, you know, be able to use the bathroom. Can I use your bathroom? You know, it happens all the time. Um, and I know, I'm pretty sure that it's still at the Buffalo Mountain Co-op, they don't let the public use the bathroom unless you like know where it is and you don't ask or something, I don't know. And then um, we still have a fair number of people requesting using the bathroom at Whistle, but I'm telling people that it's not a public toilet, I'm so sorry. Um, mm -hmm. For the most part, that goes over like a lead balloon, but... Um, and sometimes um, uh, they are successful. They like come back and they say, oh, that yellow building was open and I could get in and go to the bathroom, but it's not always open and it's not always available. So, and it, it's been a problem downtown all along, forever. I mean, it's not just COVID. I mean, we don't have any public facility, you know? So the, the cost, Sherry, it's like what, $80 a month for, a porta potty, and they I don't know, it. and that's what I remember. We purchased one for the green space in Crassbury. Um, the question would just be where to put it, and I guess where that money would, what budget that would come out of. Um, also, how frequent is cleaning? I remember it being pretty frequent. 
like they basically right. pump it and clean it. I mean, it's not daily, obviously, but it was like they took care. They took care of it. So I, I just would. It's like a service, and they come and put it down, and then they switch it out or something. Is that how it works? I would I would hazard a guess that uh, um, Port of Hadi and downtown Hardwick might see more traffic than one at the Crossberry Green Space. Um, and might um, like a weekly cleaning might not be sufficient. And I would I would like to get some numbers around this and before we before personally before I'm ready to move on something. Um, and where would they go? I would suggest putting one near the near the rail trail, the trailhead. Yeah. Like the town garage. That um, small line, he might have an opinion about that. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, what can I? I said Tom's still on the line. He might have an opinion about that. Maybe it sounds like maybe what you need to do is figure out how how often it's cleaned and then a potential spot. So it sounds like something Sean and Tom could maybe figure out, or I don't know who would want to who would take that on. Not sure how locating it at the rail trail addresses Sherry's um, concerns. Yeah, I think it um, it doesn't address Sherry's concerns at all. I was thinking multiple. Yeah, one maybe I was B1 at multiple. the rail trail and then B1 downtown. Um, it has to be clean daily. And um, I think it, this would be important. Uh, you know, the location is really going to be critical. I could, you know, it's it's good for the reasons that are being pointed out. But let's face it, when it's 90 degrees, a porta potty is not a pleasant thing to have, uh, you know, next to a given location. And there may even be some sanitary issues if it's placed near a food source. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe. Well, if we put it on the Daniels block. Uh, right now, you'd have to walk all the way around because you couldn't go across the swinging bridge, and that would deter people. <laughs> it wouldn't necessarily be super accessible, but uh, yeah, that's an interesting thought. Well, or maybe the Peace Park. Otherwise, yeah. that is Poop Park. Really? Well, because dogs. Oh, yeah. nice. People don't always clean up after their dogs. In Let's pass an ordinance. Um, we have one. We have I one. I know. That says, that ordinance, by the way, says that if your dog is um, not in your on your property, that you are supposed to pick up after your dog. Mm -hmm. That's what that ordinance says. <laughs> I would take it even further and say, even on your own, and well, yeah, on my on property. you can let your dog. I don't. My yard is clean. Yes. So that I don't step in it. Yes, that's I. Yes, that's where. Yes. So anyway, yeah, maybe two, and maybe um, you know, it's all this. It's yeah. I mean, we want people to come. And of course, if you're eating in one of the restaurants or you're, um, you know, but if you're just downtown and all of a sudden you need to use the bathroom and there is no public bathroom, it would be nice to be able to at least have that, mm -hmm. you know. I'm just wondering, I'm just thinking back to the Portalette model. Does any, can anybody re other than the Crossberry green space thing, Anybody recall being in any other Vermont town or city that has a public toilet? What it's like? We could be a trendsetter. Well, my yeah, but, virtually every place in Europe has got public right. toilets. Yeah, any uh, place else you know. wired into the sewer system. There's, those are coin ops, if I'm not mistaken. We could have coin ops. Yeah, yeah. why not, right? At least For it's the option. Most towns have, I mean, I feel like a porta potty is what a lot of towns have. They do have somewhere, whether it's town pumped or it's privately owned, you see that a lot. And then it's usually like town halls. So 
I mean, there are a lot of larger towns and villages that just have their town hall open for restrooms, which causes arguably way more of an issue than a porta potty. Um, huh. Orangeville's okay. got some down at Oxbow Park. What do they have down there? Porta potties? Yes. The regular greenhouse ones or the fancy like in a trailer one? No, the regular greenhouse ones. Okay. Um, so, Sean, can you get us pricing on what it would take to do a porta potty somewhere? I thought you did some research and discovered that there wasn't an option for a trailer type thing, but you didn't That's do correct. it. That's correct. Yeah, um, they don't have the, you know, if anybody's been to a, like a wedding event, as an example, they've got the fancy units and we checked with a couple of vendors, they don't offer these for long term rental situations. So most likely we'd be looking at, um, I mean, we can use our local vendor, uh, Michaud's as an example, I know they have them. Um, I mean, they have got some pricing. Uh, we have one at uh, Macville, but we don't do a daily clean out. That's a weekly clean out. So I think in this instance, we'd want to be getting the price on the weekly, uh, excuse me, daily clean out. I didn't go forward on that because I wanted to just see where the discussion went tonight. We can get that information. Seems we'll like have we to be start very with careful. The clean out and see what happens. I mean, you know. Uh, I would not recommend that. Uh, we can try. I mean, right. <laughs> Well, in, in the heat of summer, it might we're, not be good to have a weekly clean out schedule. We're going to be, we're going to have a lot of people patronizing various businesses and just, uh, you know, we want to make sure we don't have a negative experience. So, I, you know, I can get some advice from the port of company, uh, port of potty company, you know, what's your suggestion? That'd be good. Now, obviously we just, you know, we try a certain time limit, get the price on that. And if it doesn't work, then we adjust accordingly. Right. To include locations. Mm -hmm. Yep. Can you check a couple companies? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, next is item nine, select board to confirm equity committee terms and approval of policy change. Kaylee, are you uh, guiding That's us me. through this? Yeah, I just got to toggle over to it. So um, if you recall um, at our organizational meeting, we kind of blank nominated our committee members for one year terms. Um, we, in our founding documents, had not specified terms for the equity committee. So we, the equity committee approved a change in our formation documents to have there be um, one, two, and three year terms. Um, one process question. I don't know if the select board needs to formally approve that or if it's enough for the committee to just approve that change. Probably since the select board um, nominates people to the committee or appoints people to the committee, the select board should approve that change. Okay, great. So um, I just have to just give me one second. I'll try and find it while I uh, talk about the nomination. So we have, um, we have, oh gosh. Sean, do you mind reading off people while I go? I'm, I'm trying to find it too. Is it the same slate? You don't, uh, sorry, I'm, I, my apologies. I'm trying to find it as well, Kaylee. Uh, do you just need the names? Uh, I don't, uh, sorry, I can't put my hands on the new uh, term uh, breaks, the one, two, three. I've got, I don't have it. Eric, do you mind if we just come back to this so we're not wasting time me find it? Is that okay? I could talk for a minute. <laughs> you know, the select board reports. There we go, select board reports. So um, I'll just jump right in right here. Um, so I participated in the um, the Vermont Creative Network. Uh, the creative economy? Free, uh, creative economy thing, Create Vermont. And yep. they just put up um, uh, a plan for the future of 
of Vermont, um, yeah, creative economy action stuff. I uh, not now it just fell apart because I couldn't get it out first time. Anyway, um, it's all kind of big picture planning, but it's also um, really a great time to um, merge the creative economy with the the what's going on in the state and and with tourism and other stuff so um, it was really exciting they have a um i sent out an email that has the link to their plan um and they're asking people to take a look at it and do sort of a review of it and give them feedback um and that's all at that link so i invite you to do that i'm gonna stay um involved with it just because it's really interesting and exciting to me. Um, and I also uh, went on the webinar for the Rural Tourism Academy um, that's being put on by the Northern Forest Center. And it also is that whole like big picture planning, but um, to be better prepared for attracting new business and tourism, you know, economic social revitalization it's exciting, you know, they do these things and, and it is, it really does kind of pump you up and get you excited that that those so many people that are involved with it. I mean, on the Create Vermont thing, there were over 300 people on that Zoom call. It was really kind of cool. <laughs> um, they talked about some really great public art projects and things that were happening in, in parts of the state. Um, so that was uh, that was fun this week for me, two different things. Great. Woo ready, Kaylee? Yes, I am ready. So um, the Hardwick Equity Committee is asking that the Hardwick Select Board amend uh, Article 3, Section 1 of our formation documents, which is titled Membership. Originally, it read the Select Board has the authority to appoint all members of the Equity Committee. The minim minimum numbers of active members shall be three, and the maximum shall be nine. All terms shall expire and be considered for a reappointment at the select board's organizational meeting in March. So we are recommending that the select board adds the sentence after maximum shall be nine members. The committee has three one-year seats, two, uh, three two-year seats, and three three-year seats. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm what about the most. <laughs> I don't know if I should make that motion. We Wait, just, I have a question. Guess... Oh, so I have a question. The um, so if we're just inserting that sentence, does the last sentence still remain that the select board fills the positions on time uh, on the organizational meeting? I think that's referring to like the one year seats would still be appointed at the organizational meeting in March. And any other vac any vacant seats really. Correct. Is that is that clear enough? The, the way yeah, I, I'm. If it's clear enough, I'm fine. I just. You just don't want to do it twice. <laughs> right. <Or three. laughs> you can just modify it to say that they'll all be appointed on their expiration. Well, I like that it says that we appoint them at our organizational or when we do. That's when we do our appointments. Yeah, it helps. It's to good. It's good to do it then, I think. What if yeah, we say all expired terms yeah. or vacant seats shall be considered for reappointment at the select board's organization meeting? Thank you. Yeah. Does that handle the issue of if somebody if you have a vacancy in the interim? Does that cause a problem with that language you just said? I think it's okay because that wasn't in there before, right? Like I think select board would just appoint if the equity committee came and asked for an additional yep. member. So, Kaylee, you're making that motion. Second. Good second from Wiz. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's everybody. So, motion carries. Great. Thank you, Kaylee. So now we, I would like to nominate the following. Uh, Sean just popped them into the chat. Um, the following individuals for the equity committee. 
Kaylee Galloway Kane uh, to serve a three year term, Lucian Avery to serve a three year term, David O'Brien to serve a three year term, Chip Triano to serve a two year term, Rutu Shahad to serve a two year term, Beth Kate to serve a one year term, and Audrey Grant to serve a one year term. Okay, and, and those are all um, as if they started, they, you're already part way into the terms and all retroactively. that. Retroactively. They, they are currently, you currently nominated them for what, for all one year seats. So we're just nominating, nominating them for different seats. But it's not those, those terms that you just listed don't start today. They start, they started. When the one year started. Yeah. yeah. The anniversary shall fall on the, uh, on the uh, organizational meeting of the select board. Can I say it another way? Is that assume so? We're assuming at this phase, uh, these folks that Kaylee has just nominated effectively started this last town meeting. Is that accurate? Roughly, yeah. Just well, after organizational meeting, yeah. So then We're the timing is good. Yeah. So the you've got the timing right that you don't have more than three at a given time coming up for uh, uh, re uh, reappointment. <clears throat> All right. Sounds good. So that's the slate reorganized into the new terms. Do you have to have a second for that or do we just? Probably not technically for a nomination. I think you could say, I would say, are there any other nominations? Uh -huh. Hearing none, <laughs> all in favor of approving the slate as read out by Kaylee, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay. That's everybody. So motion carries. Kaylee, would you be able to just email me that list in the terms, please? It was a yeah, little fast. It didn't quite catch it right all. Now. Okay. Um, and uh, well, okay, uh, so there is one uh, one year seat and one two year seat. Is that correct, Kaylee? Just to remind, if there's anybody else out there in the community interested in serving. Oh, that are still vacant. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll Great. work on getting the board assignment item updated on the town website as well. With this. Oh, right. Here tonight. We this. Awesome. We have a, yeah, we got a good location now. It's a one stop shop, and we get everything updated. Um, any more so we're all we're good with the equity committee okay uh, Sherry started us with select board reports before to fill in any other select board reports Wiz um, the historical society is holding <laughs> on the top floor of the Memorial Building on May 17th. It's a Monday. And after a fairly short business meeting, um, Professor Emeritus of History and Greensboro resident Tim Breen will talk to us about his title, his, his speech is called, or his talk is called 1778, the year the people won, the year the people started the revolution. Um, Tim Breen is a Revolutionary War scholar. I'm halfway through his most recent book and it's remarkably readable. I, I, he's asking questions about the Revolutionary War that never occurred to me to ask. And um, it's, it, it promises to be a good evening. Um, it's a food, a non-food event uh, people will be seated, you know, with lots of space around you. And we thought rather than tempt people to gather together over coffee and cookies, we'd just say, you know, have dessert at, at supper and come and, and there, will no, there will not be food. I would also like to say that last night, somebody tried to get into the historical society and all they managed to do was screw up the locks. Um, that's the good news. But I also want to put out there that there is a security alarm in there. So even if they managed to get inside, <clears throat> as soon as they didn't turn off the alarm, which is coded, um, it would have gone to the police department and it would have been, it could have ruined your evening if you really made it happen. Um, Fortunately, nothing really happened except we're going to have to get new locks for the place. But it's, 
you know, it's not easy pickings and um, I would encourage people to find other ways to amuse themselves and trying to break into a historical society. Hmm. So I suppose I should go up and check the townhouse? I don't know. Um, I don't know, Sherry, whether... Did anybody whether they... else check the townhouse? Sean, do you suppose anybody checked it? Did you hear about this before or no? Uh, I did not check the townhouse. Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, Wiz contacted our police department so they're on notice and, um, you know, just yeah. uh, untolerated behavior, folks. You know, don't be doing this stuff. So everybody keep an eye out. Neighbors keep an eye out. If you see something suspicious, be in contact with our police department. Gary, Mark says he actually told me about it. Okay. Um, this morning he had been up there doing some groundwork, so he may have checked the, the townhouse. He yeah. didn't mention it, Maybe. but it's sort of his nature to do that. Okay, thank you. Uh, any oh, other? I have one more little thing, but other people can go first. No, you go. This is the history moment that I discovered. Go ahead, um, well, there were, in the beginning, in, in about 1786 or so, Hardwick was divided into plots of land that were then drawn by lots, as in literally you pick a number out of a, a, piece, a piece of paper out of a hat and it's got a number on it, and it tells you that's the lot that you've drawn if you were one of the 61 proprietors. Being a proprietor on these early Hart Vermont towns was a form of land speculation. And there were guys on this who never laid foot in Hardwick. And I find it fascinating. So Alberta, I came home this morning, came home this afternoon and immediately took the information I got out of the town records and created a plot show that I know now who had who drew what lot. And this is the thing that I th found was really interesting that Thomas Chittenden, who was the governor of Vermont at the time, managed to get, ta-da, the lot that is where the Bailey Hazen Road enters Hardwick, which means that every settler coming into the town would go past Chittenden's land. And, and I have a feeling he did some quick and, and profitable sales. Just hmm. saying, that the, the juiciest lot in town just happened to be drawn by the governor. I have a question. <laughs> yes. So the, yeah. um, the old uh, maps that I've seen have lot a lot and a range. Are you saying that someone drew yeah. for the entire lot, or just or a lot and the, range? Well. The lot and range is the way you, you do the coordinates so mm -hmm. that you got lot one in range one, or in the case of Governor Chittenden, he got lot nine in range one. Uh, and that was the okay. point where the, you know, so it's a coordinate. Yeah, okay, uh, all right, cool. Thank you. Yeah, and he, he, got, he got that one, purely by accident, I'm sure. Of course. Well, I, I bet can't. you he thought. I bet you he thought there might be an opportunity in the future if this became a toll road. I bet you that's what was going on too. Uh oh. My comment froze. Whiz. How you like that? It froze the Locked history. Her right box. up. So. Daily. Possible. Oh. Um. Proprietorships. Uh oh. Digital mayhem. Kaylee, <laughs> try again. I just, I just wanted to say um, thank you to everyone for an awesome green up day. Uh, the Hardwick Rec Committee put on a remarkable uh, <laughs> feat, and we had lots of trash delivered, and it was it was great to see some of community members. Um, it was also pretty depressing that there's that much trash on our roads. So as to what Eric said, let's try not to litter. So 
we don't have to pick up much trash next year. Yeah. There was some confusion though around the whole tire thing because I thought there were no tires being collected. And then there was a picture in the paper of this huge bin of tires. Like how, what the heck? It was oh, on the no poster idea. even, no tires this year. And then- So what, so what happened is people dumped tires at the fire station, like over a hundred tires were dumped at the fire station. And so Jason and Jeff like drove down there as quickly as possible to remove the pile. So that way- <laughs> It wouldn't yeah. grow. Yeah. So, and we had, we had, well, as you saw, the whole dumpster was filled, totally filled yeah. with tires. Yeah, that's awful. They're um, not roadside tires. There are people that are disposing of their tires on the seasonal change outs, and we can't do that moving forward. You know, we end up paying for this, and people need to do a better job of when you're doing your tire change and the tire is no longer roadworthy, pay the shop to dispose of it. You know, be do the responsible thing. Yeah, some although are found, it is a thing. Some are found. There are there. Were some found, but. Uh, just saying, sitting on the uh, grants committee for the solid waste district, some towns have been known to apply for um, the municipal grant, you know, that's a $5,000 grant to help with the resolution of some of these problems on a one time basis. It can't, they won't, it won't support like an ongoing tire situation or whatever, but it's organized around that so we could like get ahead of that next year and maybe we'll maybe we could yeah work with the recreation department and figure out whether or not we couldn't apply as a town for one of those or the recreation department for one of those municipal grants to like have like a tire or a large trash event just saying it's a possibility Maybe we could apply for an EPA grant to start a community pyrolyzing project. <laughs> I don't know. That'd be an Ill illegal burn, wouldn't it? What's no, it's totally self-contained. <laughs> it's self-contained and the products you get out of it are heating fuel oil and uh, black char that people uh -huh. use for pigments and fertiliz fertilizers. That's something to think about. But those municipal grants, they often go un- applied for just saying oh really yeah they don't get a lot of because it's hard to prove that you're not going to come back next year and apply for the same thing and they don't want to support an ongoing thing they want to support like a one time this is how we're going to do it and then this is how we're going to deal with it going forward so, so there's crash something is a, crash is an ongoing thing though right but if you have if you're developing a program and you want to oh. like spur it, you know, so to speak, seed it, and then we then have some other, but you know, people have to wrap their minds around this thing and it's not my, I, I, I. yeah. Talk to uh, Jason, rec coordinator um, about the subject this week. And one of the suggestions I had was, uh, you know, reach out to the executive director for Green Up Vermont and, you know, do that in the fall time, you know, to your point, Sherry, just let's talk, talk about, you know, this has to be an approach from multiple angles, not just at our town level mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, we're trying to keep the tires out of the way stream and trying to, you know, we're seeing a lot of tires dumped over the bank around various locations of town right now. And, it's important we do pick them up. Um, so I, you know, I think there are some opportunities here to your point. There are certainly, I, my um, lasting impression from Green Up Day is there are a lot of opportunities for people to stop dumping trash on the side of the road. Trash doesn't fall like snow. People throw it out their trucks and cars and it's, it can be stopped. So yeah, anyway. Um, I have one new business item. So going forward, uh, do we want to continue to meet by Zoom or do we want to come back to the Memorial Building? I would say until the masks are gone, no in-person meetings. I would love to get back to an in-person meeting. We, the B, BCA met last night in a, where we usually meet and we were very far apart from one another and it seemed it was pretty safe. And I'm guessing that most of us are vaccinated. Yeah, the only tricky part is whether or not um, 
people who potentially attend, which, you know, we don't have a lot of attendance at select board meetings, but it is an open meeting. And so people who are attending, how do we, how do we require them to do something, you know, like, can well, we tell them that they have to be, yeah. Before, we went again, before, before it got cold, we had the, the chairs spaced wide apart and people wore masks mm -hmm. you know it, it uh, we stopped meeting up there because we, because heating it is so hard and it was going to be expensive and cold mm -hmm. well don't forget there that is true but we did have specific guidance that prevented uh in-person meetings um I, I forget when that came in it was I lost yeah. track, sorry. But we did, we... but that may be lifting because we, um, you know, I just saw in the news, I think yesterday morning or something that the Burlington City Council is meeting inside now. So I think that they're, that we're maybe getting closer to it. And I'm, yeah, if we're all vaccinated, then I, I'm not opposed. I'll put it that way. But I don't love the having to do a half and half thing. So. Yeah. I'd love to hear from HCTV people, whether they feel comfortable with it. You know, everybody else who has to be involved with it um, has to also, you know. Town staff. Mm -hmm. So the, the half and half remote and not remote is too hard. It's awful. It's, not it's, awful. it's, it's way worse than this and having to freeze up every once in a while. Yeah. Great. Sounds like we need to talk to town employees and HCTV as a next step and as guidance changes decide. So it sounds like the board is open to moving back to in-person at any time. Michael, you mentioned you didn't want to do it. Well, there's still a mask mandate. I, I don't, I don't know when or if that mass or six months or more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, July fourth. What I see in the Vermont Forward Plan, effective July fourth, uh, assuming nothing changes uh, in a negative fashion in regards to COVID incidents, on the Vermont Forward Plan, July fourth, it's basically we're we're back to you know there there's it's recommended procedures, nothing required. So that's kind of the break I'm seeing looking at the calendar. Correct. The uh, current guidance for the good of the conversation, I checked it today. It's uh, for, but we're under the universal guidance as a uh, municipality. Um, stay home if sick, wear a mask, ensure six foot spaces and uncrowded places. Um, practice good hygiene and think before you travel. I mean, I'm not giving the details under those categories, but that's basically what's lifted. We do have, as a business, we have, we can make the call that we want in regards to how we want to conduct our business. Last report on this, you know, we had specific guidance that said for municipal sector, uh, do not conduct government uh, meetings, governmental meetings uh, in person that right, as of now that is not listed. But these other points that I brought to the table still apply. We so would next time. Go ahead, Eric. Next time, are we meeting on Zoom or are we going to meet in person? I think we have to uh, check in with our TV station because not everybody is vaccinated at this point. And if they're trying to wait to get done or in town staff, uh, you know, that, I think that does matter a little bit. That's oh, yeah. My two, that's my two cents. Okay. I'm so still next waiting time. I'm for my second shot. So yeah. I have, I'm not fully vaccinated. So. So, so next time we're on Zoom again, and uh, we'll bring it up again and see what it looks like for the one after that. Does that sound good? Yes. That works. Yeah. Okay. Just, um, awesome. Any other new business or old business? Could we have a motion to go into executive session to discuss um, lo the economic development loan contracts pursuant to one VSA uh, 313A1A. So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. That's everybody. So.